Okay, I'm going to use this uh, very simple program to just demonstrate creating some simple um, void functions. These are functions that are just going to um, perform a task, just maybe display something or calculate something and then display it. So let's just make sure we understand what this program does. There's two integers, x is 3, y is 4. Uh, another integer called sum and a double called average. So I'm going to prompt the user to enter values for x and y. And then it's going to just see out function practice. It's going to output the values of x and y. It's going to calculate the sum of x and y and output that. And then it's going to calculate the average of x and y. Um, and then it'll display that. So let me just run it. Okay, so if I put in 4 and 5, you'll see it displays function practice. X is 4 and Y is 5. 4 plus 5 is 9, and the average of 4 and 5 is 4.5. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm going to start off. I just want to show you, um, you know, the syntax of the function. So let's start by, um, I'm just going to take this code out that displays function practice. I'm going to put it in a function. So I'm going to take it out of the main program. I'm going to put the code in a function, which is just going to be called display heading. Okay. Now, when we write functions, all of these functions are going to be void functions. Um, a void function just means it doesn't return anything back to main. Um, and I have to think to myself, when I execute this code, is there any information I need from the main program? And the answer to that is no. So my parameter list is going to be empty. So that's my first function. Now I need to copy the heading of the function and up above main I need to paste it and put a semicolon um, so that I have a prototype for this function. Now remember a prototype is just the heading of the function with a semicolon at the end. They have to be an exact match. And then I'm going to go in here where I took that code from and I'm going to call that function. Now let me just show you. If I run this now, right, the heading is gone, right, because it's not calling the display heading function. So this code is never being executed. So I have to put a function call wherever I want that function to be called, okay? So what's going to happen now, it'll enter x and y. This will call the function. It means it's going to jump out, execute the function, right? Display function practice, come back right to here, and continue on with the rest of the program. Right, so now you see function practice. OK. All right, so now I want to put this code in a function as well. I'm going to call uh, this code displays x and y, so I'm going to take it out of main. I'm going to put it in a function called display uh, x, y. Okay. So I need to ask myself, is there any information from the main program that I need in order to execute this code inside the function? And the answer to that is yes. Um, in my main program, I get x and y from the user. Now, when I go out to my function, it's a separate sub-program. It doesn't see anything in main. If I want to get information from main to the function, I need to pass it in the parameter list. So in this case, I'm going to have two parameters, x and y. Okay. Then I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it up here so I have a prototype for this. Now the order of the prototype above main, the order of the functions below main doesn't really matter, but you should try and be, um, you know, neat and maybe put them in the order in which they're called. Um, maybe that's, you know, a good idea so that you can find them when you start to have a lot of functions. Okay, so after I display the heading, I want to display x and y. So I'm going to call that function. Now this function has two parameters, right? So you'll see this message, too few arguments in function call. I need to pass it two arguments. So I'm going to pass it x and I'm going to pass it y. 
Now notice in the function call, you don't put data types in here like you do right in here, um, because the main program already knows the data type of X and Y. It's specified right here. Okay. All right, so this code here, which calculates and displays the sum, I'm going to put that in a function called display sum. Okay. So again, we have to think, what do I need from the main program in order to do this? Well, I need to know what X and Y are, because right now they have values in the main program. So I'm going to pass those in. Now, at this point, I still have an error here on sum. Sum is un unidentified. It means it's not declared. So you have to think to yourself, does it need to be in the parameter list, or does it need to be declared just inside this function? It doesn't need to be in the parameter list, because at this point in the program, sum doesn't have anything in it. So you don't want to pass it to the function. What you want to do is you want to calculate it and display it here inside this function. So I'm going to declare sum inside the function locally. So it'll take x and y from main, it'll calculate the sum, and then it will display everything. Um, so again, I need to have a prototype. And then I need to call the function. It has two arguments, x and y. All right, at this point, um, yeah, let's see. OK, I want to have one more function here. This function is going to display the average. So it's going to have this code in a function. All right, and we need to think to ourselves now, what has to come from the main program? Well, we need to know what the sum is, right? That was already determined right here. Oh, no, it wasn't. Hold on just a second. OK, um, we need x and y. Uh, those were both in the main program, OK? Um, and we're calculating average, so we need to calculate the sum in here. Now, I know we calculated it in the previous um, function, but just the way we're doing this, kind of very simple with void functions, um, we'll have to repeat that here, okay? So I'll say sum is equal to x plus y, because we don't have sum in main at all, so we've got to make it again if we need it. And here, again, I need to pass in x and y. All right, so I've declared sum inside of here so I can calculate the sum. I've declared average inside of here so I can calculate the average. And then I have a C out statement which display x and y is and the average. All right, so now I've got to copy this and paste it so that I have a prototype. And then I need to call my function here. Okay, and let's run it now. And everything looks as it should. I did have a warning message down here that went by quickly, and basically it was telling me sum and average are declared in main but never used and that's correct i've taken them out of the main program entirely so if i want to get rid of that warning message it's just a warning message you know i, I should get rid of those here okay so now i'm going to run it and everything looks good okay i should probably put some comments prior to each of my functions displays a heading for the program, displays 
X and Y. Displays the sum of X and Y. And this guy displays the average of X and Y. All right, so what do we notice? That all of our prototypes are prior to main. All of our functions come after main. So here's the curly braces, right? The body of main. The main program ends, and then you have all of your functions um, individually. All right, um, the main program executes sequentially. So first you enter X, then you enter Y. Then it'll call display heading, then it'll call display XY, then it'll call display sum, then it'll call display average, okay? Uh, these are all what are referred to as void functions. They just jump out, execute a section of code, and return back to the main program. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Eh, I think that's it. Please note all variables should be declared inside of main. You should not be declaring any variables prior to main. Um, those are considered global and are poor programming practice. So you declare your variables in main and then you pass them as arguments to functions um, that happen to need them.